Hey guys, DMI here from another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We're back with some more Aladdin. Today's episode is non-canon. I don't think this happens in the movie about what's about to occur. But uh, I'm assuming they had to pad it out a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go on a little bit of a side quest. Thanks to our friend Abu and his monkeying around. Leave it to him. So... We're going to do a level in this game that, as far as I know, is not in the movie. So, prepare your butts. Going into the pyramids. Hopefully we're in good shape for that. Triangles are the sturdiest of the geometrical shapes. So this level is pretty interesting. It's not terribly difficult, but we are running low on lives here. And I haven't done it yet, and I probably won't in this Let's Play just by virtue of not wanting to, so I'm going to be careful, is your life structure, you have a zeroth life, as you can see here. Once you run out of lives, as in once the zeroth life is gone, then you have to use a continue. You have, I think you start with two. So you have to use a continue, but using a continue means that you lose your sailcloth, which isn't a huge deal breaker. This game... Being a platformer is entirely achievable without it, but it does make things a little bit more difficult, especially since I'm not very good at this game and not being able to kind of glide into certain situations to see where a ground is uh, can make things difficult. And I just like to be careful here. So I totally whiff on this scarab. If you grab these weird little chain link hooks and you swing at the apex of the of the jump, then it'll boost you all the way up to the top, and you can grab the scarab, usually around this platform here, but I totally whipped on it. So instead will enjoy some chest meat instead. Everybody loves some good chest meat. It's good for you, good for your health. That, ref that restores three hearts, so if you're running low, grab it. If not, you can always try a floor baguette, as we've seen a few times, those are always good. So having the sailcloth here is super useful, especially on these platforms with the flowing sand. Those flowing sand platforms, you cannot grab onto those ledges. So keep that in mind if you're playing this long at home. You can only grab onto ledges that don't have anything flowing through them. So you definitely would not be able to grab onto ledges that have my tears flowing across them as I play through this game. So keep that in mind. But we get 100 gems. We get another heart, which is very nice. We are getting close to the end of the game. And all the hearts we can use will be beneficial to us. Here's another heart upgrade. So that's two hearts in the span of 30 seconds. You're welcome. So that's a little tricky red gem. On the left side, you got the sand flowing ledge and you have a regular ledge. It's tempting to just grab whatever ledge is closest to you, depending upon what side you kind of slide down on. But you will die if you jump to the left side because the sand will prevent you from getting back up. So avoid that. Now, thankfully, the game throws me a bone, get ourselves a 1-up, and that 1-up is permanent. So, you can come back here multiple times, do as many run-throughs as you need, and it'll always be there. It's kind of like an infinite continue, almost, as long as you make sure you get it and you don't die prior to that moment. So, something to keep in mind. So, we've got a lot of hearts now. We got ourselves a 1-up, probably going to be able to finish everything off and you know, one-ish try, right? Like, the sky's the limit. Things are looking good. We got pot chicken. A little crock pot chicken. Speaking of crock pot chicken, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. One of my favorite things to make in a crock pot, at least involving the world of chicken, is uh, falling into pits. And, uh, no, it's buffalo chicken dip. I'm a big fan of that. I know some people that are trying to go vegetarian or maybe uh, vegan. You might make yourself some cauliflower buffalo dip, which is pretty good. I've had that as well. Pretty tasty. Never thought that I'd enjoy something like that, but I tried it once at a party and I was won over my heart. I would still probably go the buffalo chicken route just because I like the, the texture, but whatever works for you. I also make a pretty good enchilada chicken dip, so... If you guys ever bump into me in real life, you better be prepared to party, crockpot style. That's how we do it in the Midwest. All right, so like I said, that one up is always going to be there. So it's nice to have a little bit of comfort 
as we plunge Aladdin onto some spikes. He picked a bad day to forget to wear his sandals. Always bring your pyramid sandals with you. We'll keep at it. These snake heads are a little tough to platform onto. They're very similar to the ledges that were in the genie head, whatever that weird world was. So that's unfortunate. That ledge is not grabbable from that distance, but they're very similar to those little spots in the in the genie head where you could constantly jump on the ledges over and over and over again. Same thing with the lava, with those stalagmites. Same thing, same idea. So you can jump on them in an infinite amount of times. If you hit the jump button as you land on them, it does give you a little bit of a boost, but it's not super dependable. So just be careful where you're landing. That sailcloth hopefully will help you. So let's grab this life, hopefully just one last time. Fingers crossed, we won't need it again. It is a lifesaver though, because we're gonna want to not run into the end game with only one life, or zeroth life, I guess. One life would be okay. That's technically two lives. And hopefully, you know, as you get further into this game, having that sailcloth is always going to be kind of insurance. It's not a scam, thankfully. It will bail you out at times, and I do believe there might be a point later in the game where if you do lose the sailcloth from continuing, the game will give you a sailcloth. So that's kind of good. So it's almost it might be almost worthwhile to take an intentional death. <gasps> I can't believe I said that. But uh, yeah. So in this pyramid, someone, some pharaoh is drying their, uh, their dishes. Looks like they're, they uh, don't have dishwashing technology yet. So instead, we're going to be chain link fencing our our mugs here. I remember one Father's Day, I did get my dad a mug that said the world's okay as dad, which is it was funny, but it's also untrue. My dad is awesome. Hopefully you all have awesome dads out there or potentially mothers who have acted as the role of fathers. Hopefully you have good parents in your lives to help get you through your days. All right, so we got a new enemy here. This guy is a sword thrower. He cannot be stunned by anything, unfortunately. So you just gotta jump on him. And this, this seems a little cute. I'll be quiet for a second. So we got a boo, monkeying around again. Look at his japes, his ape japes. He stole the head of that sarcophagus. And that's it. I'm not entirely sure why they put that there, but hey, that's the end of stage five. Wasn't too bad. And I feel like I did pretty good on gems. Okay, yeah, so nine out of 10, not too bad, not too bad. And uh, here we are for the pivotal scene of love. They don't quite kind of connect the dots for you about how we get here and what's going on. So we kind of just like jump cut to uh, Aladdin becoming Prince Ali Ababwa. That's pretty fun to say. Say that three times fast. Ababwa, Ababwa, Ababwa. So he's now going to try to seduce Princess Jasmine, lure her into a life of marriage. I'm not entirely sure how high we are in the sky that there are birds flying up here, but those are drones, so I guess technically robots can fly as high as they want to. So we come into this mission with one heart, but thankfully there are no enemies. This is just kind of a bonus stage where you can load up on gems, which is kind of fun. Flying all around Agrabah. All around, that's what I just said. All around Agraba. As we listen to a whole new world. You can see the cityscape down below. There's probably supposed to be like a good indicator of how to get the red gems on this one, but I don't know, it's kind of tough to see where they are. So just grab all the blue ones you can, I suppose. Getting 100 like I just did gets me a full life and an extra heart. So that's really nice. We'll go into the next mission almost with 10 hearts. It's pretty good. 
I enjoy the Super Nintendo sound chip version of this song. I like the way that they've kind of differentiated between the city and then the the clouds up above. Kind of nice work by Capcom here to layer the scene. But uh, yeah, that's it. Done and done. Magic Carpet Ride complete. Can't imagine how funny it'd be if those two got really motion sick and started throwing up from the people down below. Anyway, guys, I've been D-Mike. Thanks for watching Super Nintendo Sundays, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.